The upcoming hurricane season is going to be built different. Worldwide ocean temperatures are hitting record highs, which has stumped scientists. At the same time, a developing El Nino is emerging over the Pacific Ocean. We have already seen some prolific tropical cyclones this year. For example, Cyclone Freddy was an exceptionally powerful and deadly storm that traversed the entirety of the South Indian Ocean between February 5th and March 14th. It passed close to the island of Mauritius before making landfall in Madagascar and then making multiple landfalls in Mozambique. The incredible duration of this tropical cyclone broke records, making it the longest-lived cyclone on planet Earth. Then Category 5 Cyclone Ilsa formed and then slammed into northwest Australia, causing significant damage. Most recently, an exceptionally powerful typhoon slams the island of Guam, making it the worst storm for the island in 60 years and the most intense and violent tropical cyclone on Earth since 2021. It's clear that something is different about this year. We still aren't even halfway through the year, and we have already seen some extraordinary tropical cyclones occur in different parts of the globe, so that makes some wonder. What's in store for the Atlantic hurricane season? Well, stay tuned to this video to find out. Like I highlighted earlier in this video, there will be two primary factors playing into the Atlantic hurricane season, one of which has the capability of reducing hurricane activity, and the other has the ability to increase it. El Nino, a warming event of the waters of the equatorial Pacific, is known to weaken Atlantic hurricane seasons. While that may be the case for many other years, we're also seeing sea surface temperatures at record highs. This could potentially offset the effects of El Nino. Which of these factors will win is the real question, and that's what makes this year's forecast so complicated. Just yesterday on May 25th, NOAA released their official forecast for this hurricane season. They are predicting a near-normal hurricane season for 2023, including 12 to 17 named storms, 5 to 9 hurricanes, and 1 to 4 major hurricanes. This is a very interesting forecast, especially the range between one and four major hurricanes. That gives me insight in how much uncertainty there is. Just those two factors that we reviewed earlier can be the difference between one intense hurricane and four. I've been talking a lot about these two main factors, but there's another thing we have to take into consideration. A lot of hurricanes in the Atlantic come from tropical waves that emerge off the west coast of Africa. When these thunderstorm complexes move off of Africa and encounter the right conditions, they can develop into tropical storms or even hurricanes. For 2023, there is a potential for an above-normal West African monsoon, increasing the chance of these tropical waves to move over the Atlantic. With this in mind, let's take a look at my landfall hotspot forecast. So after looking at hurricane season analogs and other factors, I'm expecting Texas and Louisiana to be at a below normal risk of tropical systems making landfall. This doesn't mean it can't happen, it just means that the chance will be lower than average. Along the east coast from about the Del Marva up to Maine, I'm expecting the tropical system landfall risk to be about average. We may see a system or two pass close or even make landfall, but the risk will be right around average. Lastly, I personally expect the southeast U.S. to have the highest risk for a tropical storm or hurricane landfall. This risk area extends from the Mississippi and Alabama coasts all the way down towards Florida and up into the Carolinas. This is where I think people should pay special attention since the conditions will be most favorable for a landfall along these coastlines. And now for my overall and official forecast for the Atlantic Basin. In this green shade in the tropical Atlantic, I'm expecting wetter than normal weather associated with that above average western African monsoon. Like we are already seeing, I'm also expecting above average sea surface temperatures to persist. This will allow for tropical waves to move over that area and strengthen. This yellow area, which extends from the central tropical Atlantic into the southern Caribbean and up into the western Gulf, 
is where the conditions will be the most unfavorable for tropical development due to the greater atmospheric stability and increased wind shear. This coincides with the below-average tropical cyclone landfall risk for Texas and Louisiana. Next up, this bright red area including the southeast U.S. and down into the northern Caribbean and Bahamas is where the most favorable conditions will be for tropical development. This lines up with the greatest landfall risk zone which I showed on the previous map. The orange shaded region along the rest of the east coast and the Canadian Maritimes is where I expect at least a couple of tropical systems to move through, especially systems that move northward along the east coast. The massive purple area in the middle of the Atlantic is where I expect multiple fish storms to form, and basically what that means is tropical systems that either develop or remain over open water. And lastly, we have a light purple area which includes the United Kingdom and the Iberian Peninsula. This is where I expect to see a couple tropical remnants, such as former tropical systems that move across the Atlantic and eventually dissipate over this region. And that will wrap up my official 2023 Atlantic hurricane season forecast. In conclusion of this video, here are a few points to take away. I know I showed you a couple of maps and forecasts, but don't focus too much on that, because this season is just simply too unpredictable and rare, so expect the unexpected. Also remember to prepare now. Now is the time to prepare and not when a tropical system is aimed at your location. And lastly, the most important point, it only takes one storm to make the season bad.